The Batman Arkham games are considered some of, if not the best, superhero video games of all time. They were fun dives into the world and lore of Batman, and fans were eager for the final game in the series, Batman Arkham Knight. But before they could violently beat up the mentally ill, you see, Batman is actually bad. He doesn't do anything to help any of the people in Gotham. He's actually not good. He just beats up Clint. They got a smaller game to hold them over, Batman Arkham Origins. I liked Arkham Origins as a concept, a game where you could see Batman in his early years and even play as a pre-Bat Bruce. It's incredibly rare that we see a superhero origin story game, and it was so much fun seeing Batman interact with some of his greatest enemies for the first time. But I don't like Batman. I like Spider-Man. But being a Spider-Man fan is tough, since the only cool thing we have that Batman doesn't is Spider-Verse and No Way Home. Batman still has good comics being made to this day, and Batman has cartoons that don't get canned every five minutes, and they're usually really good. Sometimes I get really jealous of the stuff Batman has because it feels like he just has way cooler stuff than Spider-Man does. But I'm really happy that the uh, Marvel Spider-Man show got canned. This, everything about this show annoys me. Sometimes I just want the things that Batman has, but instead of it being Batman, it's Spider-Man instead. I'd really love to see a Spider-Man Brave and the Bold style cartoon. I'd watch the shit out of that. But today I wait no longer. I'm stealing! What if Spider-Man had a Batman Arkham Origins style video game that took place within the Spider-Man PS4 universe? Today I will be pitching to you my idea for a Spider-Man PS4 Origins video game. Hello, welcome to the non-scripted section of this video. I'm going to be going over my short idea for what I have for the main story. It's not going to be anything too complicated because I'm not a story writer, despite the fact I'm writing a comic book. I am not a good story writer. I am only giving an idea for what I think the story could be based off of. Of course, I'm not saying that this story is perfect, there could be more added, and if any of you have any ideas for what could be added into this story, you can always suggest them in the comments section. I read almost every single one of your comments, so I encourage that if you have a good idea, it would be best for me to see it in the comments. Spider-Man is just fresh out of losing his Uncle Ben. He's still going through the grief of his decision of letting the burglar run past him, that same burglar that killed Uncle Ben later that night. Peter has learned that with great power must come great responsibility, and after two weeks without his Uncle Ben, he's decided that he's finally going to go out and start stopping criminals. The game starts on Peter's first swing in his brand new costume. Peter's costume is shabby, it's not too well put together. The boots are made out of socks, it's all leggings and sports shirts. I want to very much emphasize that this costume is homemade. It is as homemade as it gets. You can see the seams on the in-game model, you can see through the lenses a tiny bit, it's not as well put together as Peter has it in the later games. Spider-Man is stopping criminals willy-nilly, but he's been doing insane damage to the Kingpin's operations, unbeknownst to him. Kingpin is angered by this halt in his business by Spider-Man, and decides that instead of taking him out immediately, he's going to wait to find something else he can use against Spider-Man in the future by monitoring his actions. Spider-Man slowly becomes a figure in the public eye thanks to the Daily Bugle printing bad press about him. The city does not like Spider-Man, despite the fact that he saves its civilians almost every day. Out one day on patrol, Spider-Man meets a fellow powered high schooler, Josephine Pulaski, from Amazing Fantasy issue number 17. Amazing Fantasy issue number 17 is from a small Amazing Fantasy continuation that tells the story of Spider-Man immediately after Amazing Fantasy 15. It's a very fun read, it's only three issues long, so if you don't really want to sit down for a 100,000 issue comic book, I think this is a fun way to check out Spider-Man in his early years. I believe the title is Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man, and it only has three issues, 16, 17, and 18, continuing off of Amazing Fantasy 15. Instead of sharing Spider-Man's guiltful obligation to be responsible and look after the citizens of New York, Josephine would rather live a life of irresponsibility and fly around and cause trouble. Unbeknownst to Spider-Man, 
Some of the incidents he's been stopping have been because of Joey. Construction workers almost getting killed by falling I-beams? That's because Joey was dicking around in the construction site. A flying car that Spider-Man has to catch to prevent from civilians being crushed? That's because Joey threw it around because she was bored. But this was before Spider-Man met her. Spider-Man and Joey become close friends, and Spider-Man starts to become a little less responsible as him and Joey fly around the city having fun. Some of these events wouldn't be just cutscenes, obviously, because that would be boring. I think a fun way for you to put the player in a position where they have to actually play with Joey would be to do, like, a classic Spider-Man race mission or a chase mission where you have to chase Joey around the city. Of course, something akin to the Black Cat mission in Spider-Man 2 and in Spider-Man PS4. Maybe some race missions around the city with Joey, stuff like that. Joey has no clue why Spider-Man uses his powers for good. And when Spider-Man suggests that they should start fighting crime together, Joey is very opposed to this idea. After one final heated fight about Joey being irresponsible, Joey decides that she no longer wants to be friends with Spider-Man. This is when Kingpin seizes his opportunity and hires Joey to finally put an end to the Spider-Man. That's all I have so far in terms of story. It's obviously not the best story in the world, but I do think something short like this could work. I'm thinking this game, at least the main story, should be as long as the Miles Morales game. It's a short little side game. I don't think a game like this needs to be as long as Spider-Man PS4, at least the first one, but I do think it would be cool to be that way. But anyway, we're gonna get to the side content of the game, and just like general stuff, like the UI, the HUD, the mechanics, etc. Alright, so now we're gonna move on to probably the most anticipated part of this video, because I know everybody loves when I talk about superhero costumes, and they don't lambast me and say stupid things in the comments. We're gonna talk about the alternate suits that I would add for this game. Obviously, after looking at this list, you guys are probably gonna be disappointed with the length, but again, that's where you as viewers come in and comment what suits you think would fit my specific theme for alternate costumes, and yes, all the alternate costumes shown here have a theme. I want all of the alternate costumes in this game to sort of be costumes that if Peter were to wear, I want them to feel like he's still discovering himself in terms of his superhero identity via costume design. So costumes I'm going to be picking are most likely going to be unused concept art, art that did feel like Spider-Man, but didn't hit the mark, just like Peter should be feeling right now as a superhero. He doesn't quite feel like one yet. And I think a lot of these alternate costumes should reflect that. I also want to pick a lot of costumes that a high school version of Spider-Man has worn. Yes, there can be a little bit of high school drama in this game. Of course, I didn't write it into the plot because I didn't want it to be too important. But anyway, now we're going to get on with some of these suits. And I, of course, will be explaining every entry as I go on. The first submission is going to be this really cool Ben Riley alternate concept costume I found. This was made, I'm guessing, when they were trying to develop Ben Riley's sensational Spider-Man outfit. It's very cool. It has white webbing. The gloves of this costume also have the webs originating from the palms. The webs are a little bit messy. The eyes are really vaguely like, and I quite enjoy it. I like the grayish blue they used for the secondary color of this costume, and I think it complements the pinkish red weirdly well. I did a recreation of this suit in VR chat, and I often put it on because I find that this is one of my favorite concept art suits that I've seen. Next we're gonna move on to another unused concept art suit that's actually being more recognized as of recently. The original black costume. Now I know this might be a little odd using a costume that looks so similar to the black suit, but I mean, the last game has had a few entries that have just been a plain black costume with a spider logo on it. So I figure Insomniac can get away with it this time, as long as it's not definitively the black suit. This one is not definitively the black suit, because it has a red spider on it. I don't really have much to say about this one, it's just an unused Spider-Man outfit that I think people will like. Me personally, I would have preferred if the eyes were red along with the spider logos. I just think the color distribution is thrown off by the eyes being white. 
This is a colorized version of Jack Kirby's original concept for Spider-Man, colored by me, so this may not be exactly what Kirby was thinking, but this is kind of what I would imagine it to be colored like. This costume was created by Jack Kirby when he was told that Stan Lee needed a costume for a character that would be called Spider-Man. Of course, Steve Ditko's design was the one that won out over this one, but I think this one would be a cool little addition, and a reference to one of the artists that made Marvel so great. And of course I want to use some of the versions of Spider-Man drawn by the artists that made Spider-Man so great in the 60s all the way up through the 90s. Of course, you can always have artists like John Romita Sr., the guy who did Untold Tales of Spider-Man, I can't remember his name, Sal Buscema, but not too much. You don't want to have too many variations of the classic suit. I always like to have some variety, despite the fact that I only ever wear versions of the classic suit when I boot up the game. I do think it is good to reference some of these artists that made Spider-Man so great back then by replicating their work in the form of an in-game alternate costume, and of course, pay them for using their work. I shouldn't have to explain why I want a costume from the Ultimate Spider-Man run by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. I would like this costume to be rendered in Mark Bagley's art style, specifically with Justin Ponsor's color shading. I would like it to look like it popped right out of the pages of the comic look. I would love those big, white, reflective eyes, that very iconic back logo, and of course the specific blue muscle tone shading. I think this is one of my favorite renditions of the classic suit. I think it just looks so clean and spiffy and it's pretty much everything I love about modern Spider-Man in one outfit. That's pretty much it for all of the alternate costumes that I would add. Of course, if you guys suggest any in the comments, I will probably agree with you and add those to this imaginary list I want to make. But now I'm going to tell you guys about some costumes from the first Spider-Man PS4 game that I think should be kept in the game. All of these costumes are going to follow the themes I've already set for the costumes I've suggested. I'm going to keep the Homecoming Homemade suit, the Stark suit, the Tasm 1 suit, I would also vouch to add the Human Spider suit, the Wrestler suit, the Spider-Man Noir suit, and the 2099 Black suit, but only if it looks like how it first appeared, being all black with the web cape and a bit of a rounder logo. That's pretty much all I have for the alternate suit, but let me tell you about the cool idea for how the game can incentivize you to use photo mode to unlock these costumes. Alright, so I want to establish in this game that Peter gets a job at the Daily Bugle taking pictures. So, I feel like you could work that in with the photo mode very easily. So once you stop crime, instead of getting crime tokens, or any of those other bonuses you get for stopping crimes in the Spider-Man PS4 games, instead, you get a little bit of cash. Now normally if you don't use the photo mode while fighting crimes, you still get a pretty decent amount of cash. Peter will just have to set up a gadget specifically made for taking photos of him fighting crime before he gets started. Or something like that. You could just have him do it automatically. Just like if you throw someone off a building in the video game, they automatically get tethered to a surface so they don't hit the ground. Something like that. The second Peter sees a crime, he automatically shoots down a camera. You get a pretty decent chunk of cash for stopping this crime this way, without using the photo mode. But, if you decide to use the photo mode while fighting crime, you get twice the amount you normally would. Now obviously, without anything to stop you from just spamming taking bad pictures, there would have to be some sort of algorithm in place to detect whether the picture you've taken is actually good or not. It would scan for things like how many different colors are in the image, where is Spider-Man in the image, where is the criminal, how close is the criminal to the camera, how far away is Spider-Man from the camera? Is Spider-Man shooting a web? You'd get more bonuses for depending on what Spider-Man is currently doing in the picture. If Spider-Man is punching someone, you get more cash for that picture. If Spider-Man is shooting a web, you get more cash for that picture. If Spider-Man's currently doing a finisher, you get more cash for that picture. Essentially, the game does not reward you for taking bad pictures. You can only take maybe one to three pictures per crime so that you can't just spam pictures but if you take all three pictures you just get double what you normally would if you didn't essentially to boil it down you get money for taking pictures of spider-man doing these things and there is certain criteria that will grade the pictures you take 
Now the money be used for making alternate costumes, but they will be also used to unlock all of the gear and upgrades in the game. Everything that's upgradable in this game is bought by the cash from the Daily Bugle. The Daily Bugle is probably something you would unlock maybe like a third of the way into the game, and then you would start getting upgrades naturally, and then alternate suits. You would get money for every mission you complete, but if you use the photo mode, you just get more cash, which means you unlock everything quicker. This also counts for boss fights, etc. Peter Parker gets himself into some of the most relatable situations any human can get into. Whether it's being strapped for cash and doing absolutely anything for that bag. Whether it be selling pictures of himself to the Daily Bugle so they can slander him, or working for a mob boss, Peter will absolutely do anything for that bag. Just like me. Do you see where this is going? I once again am here to tell you guys about Spiting Heroes' awesome web shooter products. I've joined their referral program, and if you click the link in the description and buy through there, not only do you support me, but you also get yourself a super cool pair of web shooters you can mess around with. And remember, if you buy two, you get a slight discount. Thank you so much for sticking through the video, and let's continue. Alright, so here I'm just briefly going to talk about the new UI I've put in place, and then I'm going to talk about some other things you should know about Peter in this game. The UI here is very simple. I wanted it to be less techy than the previous iterations of the UI, since Peter is primarily low tech in this game. He mostly just fights with his web shooters and his fists. That's it. There's only one other gadget he has, and I wouldn't even necessarily consider it a gadget, rather than like a, like a different web setting. So up here we have Peter's health, Peter's combo meter, and the focus meter, which have all been reworked to look a little less low techy and maybe even a little cartoony. Of course, I would obviously change it up if I had the resources that Insomniac does, but I don't, so they look silly and cartoony for now. Everything works pretty much exactly the same, except the focus meter is pretty much just webbing. Peter has made his webbing so that if he were to cover it over his wounds, it would still heal him. It has healing properties, his webbing. So for example, if Peter was just punched by a bad guy in the side, all he would have to do is web up his side and he would feel much better. It's sort of like the healing mechanic from the Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game. It's just exactly the same except it runs on a focus bar instead of you just have to hold down whatever button you have to press in that game to heal. Over here we just have Peter's web shooters, there's not much to highlight. Down here we have the map. It looks like Peter's essentially just drawn out an entire map of New York City and it's just this small little splotch navigating around it. I want all the buildings to look like small little squiggles and essentially everything on this map just looks like it's drawn out by Peter. The UI doesn't really have much importance, I just want it to look different because I thought the high tech UI wouldn't really fit Peter in this game. I just wanted to change it up a little bit, but essentially that's all I have to say about the new UI. Alright, so we're coming towards the end of this video here. I want to briefly mention a few things before we wrap it up. I want to bring back a web gadget that was taken out of the game and repurpose it into something Peter uses in this game. I want to bring back the web line. The web line was a cool thing that I was kind of confused as to why it was taken out. Looking at this background footage here, you can kind of see why, because with the resupply, it would be absolutely broken in game, and the physics of it are kind of wonky. So I understand why it was taken out. So I guess if you stripped it a lot of its original purposes, you could probably get something that worked really well. My ideal scenario for the web line would be in stealth sections, where for example, if Peter could crawl up to the ceiling and make a nest above all of his enemies, he'd be able to stalk them from above. I would only allow Peter to use maybe one or two of these at a time to prevent you from just camping up in the ceiling, and maybe have them so they can only be stood on for a limited amount of time before breaking. I know it wouldn't make any sense for them to break because you'd have to have them be able to withstand huge G's of force to be able to even hold Peter as he swings, but if it could find some way to get them to dissolve after a while, that would be fine. Next, I want to sort of talk about who Peter is in this game. I want Peter to be less of a pushover than he is in the first game, and I kind of want him to be more of a dick in this game. His biggest mistake was him not speaking out in selfishness, being quiet as the burglar who ran past got away from him. He didn't do it because he was shy or scared of stopping him, he did it because he just didn't feel like it. But now, instead of not speaking out in selfishness, Peter will always speak out in selflessness. Peter is always going to speak out against anyone who opposes him, 
even if it gets him in trouble or makes him come off as kind of an asshole. I just want Peter to be a little angsty in this game. Obviously, he's not going to be putting on eye makeup and wandering around in the dead of the night. I mean, sometimes, but without the makeup. I just want him to kind of be an asshole in this game, sort of similar to how he was in the Ultimate Spider-Man books, and in the early Ditko books. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for this video. I'm pretty sure I could have shortened this video down to maybe 15 minutes, due to the fact I only went over like 4 or 5 concepts, but I feel like you guys wanted more to chew on, so if I gave you guys maybe a 20 minute video I feel like you guys wouldn't have complained. But anyway. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. It's looking like YouTube is actually going to be a good way for me to get a decent chunk of money. So I'm definitely going to be working on my YouTube channel a lot more. And again, speaking of chasing that bread, if you would like to get your pair of web shooters, please check the link in my description. If you buy it through the link, you support me. If you don't, you only support Spiting Heroes and yourself. I would really appreciate being involved in that equation. I love you all so much. And of course, I read all your comments, so be sure to comment any ideas you have below. Thank you all so much, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. I'm probably going to do a part two to the Fortnite video, or I'm going to go over the Tasm 1 suit. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye.